Praise the Lord. Praise our living God. Hallelujah. We thank God for a good morning and we thank God that we are here. Every time I stand here, every time I come to the house of the Lord, I say glory to God. It's not by my might, it's not by my strength, neither by my good works, but by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good morning. We are here again in your presence to glorify you, to give you praise, and to hear what you have to speak to us. As your children, we are humbled before you. We pray and ask for your holy presence amidst us. Let all that will be spoken here, let all that will be done in your house be to your glory, God. Use me as a vessel to speak to your people. Not I, but your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank the church leadership for giving me this opportunity today to share the word of God. Uh, it's an honor because who am I to stand here if not by the grace of God? Hallelujah. Uh, I want to thank God for a good week he's given us as Romero Church, especially to the married. We had a Back to Eden week, reminding ourselves, getting back into that amazing place that God had made man for, but unfortunately, we did not survive. We did not pass the test of time to remain in the Garden of Eden. But we've been taught, we've been spoken to by great speakers who imparted informative insights, guiding us on the journey back to back of Eden. And each day of the conference uh, really served as a stepping stone uh, to draw us nearer to God's heart and it illuminated our path towards cultivating healthier and more God-centered marriages. So we thank God for that time. It was a learning moment. It was a learning time for each and every one who managed to come or who managed to follow whatever teachings were taking place here. So today we are concluding Back to Eden teachings. And still our central focus remains on the profound understanding that the deepening of our relationship with God serves to enrich and fortify the bonds within our families. Without God at the center, all our relationships are a, an illusion. Without God at, a, at the center, our relationships will not hold. Hallelujah. So, with God at the center, we are called to draw to God because he will draw near to us. That is what James says, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. As we draw near to God, then the ripple effect will not be only felt in our personal lives, but will also be felt within the sacred spaces of our families. If we draw near to God, we'll become more like him. And who is God? God is love. And if we go near to every single time, closer, closer to him, we become more like him. And what radiates out of us is love. Hallelujah. So, if we want strong families, if we want stronger relationships, God is at the center. The foundational principle of relationships is love. Let's hear what Matthew says. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first commandment, the first and the greatest commandment. The second most important is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hallelujah. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But when I read these commandments, these greatest commandments that we are given, you cannot love your neighbor 
before you love God. You can only be able to give love only if you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is when you can be able to say, I love you. That's when fathers can really stand and say, I love you, my children, because they love God. That's when wives and husbands can say, I love you, because I love God. That's when children can say, I love my parents, I love my siblings, because I know God. Hear what St. John says, John, 1 John, sorry, 1 John chapter 4, from verse 7 to 8. It's, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. And if one does not love, he does not know God, because God is love. Hallelujah. I think I can end the someone here. Because we are looking at love. If you love, you know God and you're born of God. If you don't have love, you do not know God. So if somebody approaches you and you know these people do not love God and they are convincing you that they love you, what kind of love are they giving you? From where? The source of love is God. If you love God, if you know God, if you've been born again, that is when you can stand to truly say, I love you. I love my family. I love my children. I love my spouse. Because you are like a cable that con is connected into the source of power. A cable that is plugged out is useless. There is no power in it. But once you connect the cable into the source of power, then there is the electric current through it to whatever gadget you want to charge. So if you are not connected to the source of love, what love are you giving to your family? What love are you giving to your siblings? What love are you giving to your wife? Where is it coming from? This is fake love. This is conditional love attached to something. Probably it's attached to beauty. And when beauty fades, then the love is over. Maybe it's attached to money. If the money is not there, the love will definitely be over. But the love we are talking about is unconditional love. From the beginning, it's love. To the end, it's love. Hallelujah. And that is what we are being called to have. For stronger relationships, there should be love among us. Love one another. That's what Jesus told his disciples. That's when people will know if you love one another that you're my disciples. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is love? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verses 4 to 7, it helps us to understand what love is. When you're telling somebody that you love them, do you have these qualities? Is your love patient? Even some, when somebody wrongs you, are you patient? Is your love kind? Do you approach people with kindness? Is your love not jealousy? Are you not jealous of your friends when they get better things than you? When they perform better than you? Do you still love them? Is your love proud? Oh, I am better than so and so. Is that what you call love? Is your love happy with the truth? Does your love ever give up? Is your love faith, hope, and patient? So when you look at all these qualities of love, the descriptions of love, the love we are talking about, what kind of love 
do you have? The love from the source of love? Oh, it is the love you think you have, but you don't have. It's a time of reflection. Do we love as the Bible says? Are the people around us, are the people we live with feeling that true, unconditional love? As the children of God, what is our love towards one another? Are we truly disciples of Jesus? I am speaking to you because you've come in the house of the Lord and I believe I am speaking to Christians. And Christians are people who are followers of Christ. So are we the true disciples of Christ? Does our heart really convince us that we are we have this love that we are called to show, that we are called to give to others. Our love for God definitely serves as a cornerstone for all our relationships. As young people, how you relate with your families, relate with your siblings. As fathers and mothers, how you relate with your children. As spouses, how you relate with one another another. Our foundation for all our relationship is centered on God. And therefore our deep connection, if we are deeply rooted into God, this will directly influence our relationship with the people closest to us. And people will know, yes, this is really a child of God because his life is a testimony of love. Hallelujah. When we talk about God's life, I, I want to use this analogy of God's love being like the fertile soil in which our family tree is embedded and secure and flourishes because we get all the nutrients from God's love. All our provisions are from him. The love that we need, definitely we are absorbing it from God because we are deeply rooted as a tree that is planted by the water side that bears fruit day and night. Similarly, when you look at the sunshine outside here, all the leaves of the tree and we are the family members on the, on the tree. We all benefit from this unconditional love of God. Everyone feels the unconditional love of God. Just as the sunshine rises and the branches, the stalks and the leaves of the tree benefit. So, as us as a family, as a garden, we thrive better when we are anchored in the love of God. We can have that family love. We can feel the atmosphere in the home, the ambience in the home, only if we are anchored in the love of God. Hallelujah. And who does not want to be loved anyway? Who says love is meaningless? I don't really need to be loved. I don't care. Nobody, every one of us loves being loved. Every one of us loves to receive love. And if we are people who are to give genuine love, we must be plugged into the source of love, and that is God alone. Hallelujah. Today, we read about Galatians, and is telling us about the, the nature of the spirit and the human nature. You looked at the fruits of the human nature. Nobody ever wants to produce these fruits of human nature. 
because there's nothing good in them. They are immoral, filthy, indecent actions. People worship idols. People become enemies and they fight. They become jealous, angry, and ambitious, and they separate into partisan groups. Whoever wants to be that? Whoever wants? But sometimes we find ourselves in this because we are lacking the love of God. We find we cannot connect with people properly because we are not charged properly. We are not receiving the love from the source. But the Bible says the fruits of the Spirit are the opposite. Why? Because you are well plugged into the source of love. And all that people can see are the seeds of love. Peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Who would not love to live with such a human being? Who would not love to be such a person who gives this kind of love to everybody who is around them? Most of us, when we go to families or the families we come from or we've come from, you find sometimes there is no spirit. There's no fruit of the spirit. Man is fighting with wife, children fighting parents, parents fighting, and this is on and this is now the life outside here. Why? Because we have not known or we have not drawn closer to the source of love who is God. Today I'm not going to explain what these fruits of nature of nature or the fruits of the spirits are. We've had these Bible readings year in, year out. We've read these Bible verses several times. I think it's high time now we look at the practical part of it. If I don't have love, if I'm struggling to live with this unbearable woman, if I'm trying to live with this irresponsible man, if I'm trying to live with these children who are not respectful and are not listening to me as a parent, what should I do? That is what I want to focus on. It's high time we start thinking about how to do, what to do, rather than reading over and over the scriptures, yet we have no practical life. Hallelujah. So how do we ensure, or how are we going to help our relationships flourish more than the relationships we have now. I have three ways that would like us to apply in our daily lives and see if we are drawing closer to God and see if there are changes in the way we live with each other. Number one, it's prayer and unity. If you're living a prayerless life, if you're living a life of prayer as an individual, but you are not praying as a family, you're not praying as siblings, as mothers and fathers together, or with those people you live at home, there is something amiss. A prayer, a praying family, or a family that prays together, stays together. I want to draw an example of the visitors we had last Friday. For those of you who were here, Isimbi and the husband. They are a good example, and I wish how every couple or every family would listen to their testimony. A young Christian couple, married, thinking that life is going to be amazing, but along the way, they found they find their expectations are not being met. They find that they're not being happy with each other, and yet there are people who pray. They find that they are not fulfilling each other's expectations, and over the years, they find that they are losing their life. 
They find that love is cold. This is not what they expected. It becomes tough for them to understand each other. This happens to every family. This happens to every couple. Later on in life, they said, this was God stepping in, I think, to support and to help. They get a crisis. And in this crisis, they remember, we can only call to God. Our help comes from the Lord. Let's pray. As they start to pray together over and over, not praying about their relationship, but praying about the crisis that we are facing as a family, there they realized, oh, my husband is a good man. My wife is a good woman. Why have we been fighting over this? Why were we not happy? It's through prayer that they rediscovered themselves and found out they are actually very good to each other. But they did not know why there was a missing link somewhere. Everyone was praying individually. But now that they have created time to pray as a family, now that they are coming closer and closer to talk more intimately in the presence of God, they discover and their relationship is renewed. And here they are, above 10 years in marriage. Hallelujah. A family that prays together stays together. How will you go about this? For those who do not have, establish family prayer routines. Make it a point that you pray as a husband, as a wife at home. Let everybody gather together before you go to sleep. Pray with your children. Pray with those people you stay in the home. When you develop this routine of prayer, there are so many things that are going to be answered. There are so many prayer requests that God is going to answer. And even that person who seemed impossible, that person who seemed not understanding, with prayer everything is possible. Hallelujah. And things will change and change for the better. Seek God guidance together as a family. If we do that, our family garden will flourish when cared for collectively. Our families will bloom when nurtured through shared prayers and seeking God's guidance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a testimony. We have done that as a family. And I see it working for us. Because every single day, every single time, even before we get out of the house, we say, let's hold hands, let's pray. If there is anything that is not working out well, that is the point to address the problem. Hallelujah. And that keeps us going. That keeps us moving forward. If there is anything that is not working out during the time of prayer, that is when we are going to sort it out. Because you cannot come before God when you have not forgiven your friend, when you have not forgiven your child, or he has, they have not forgiven you. Hallelujah. And that runs the family smoothly. So if you did not have this routine, and you're struggling in your relationship with your family, with your brothers and sisters, prayer opens heaven. Hallelujah. Number two, as we read in Galatians, let's bear the fruits of the Spirit. And let's make it intentional. Let's say we are going to cultivate the atmosphere of love in our home. If, for example, let me just use my, my example. I'm not going to mention any names. If, for example, I and my husband Cultivate the atmosphere of love, joy, and patience in our home. Definitely the young boys in this home are looking at us. Definitely these young boys are understanding when things are not right. Children can read through lines. They see what is happening. They see how the father behaves, how the mother behaves. What will come out of them if we are truly a good example to them they will definitely learn how to be kind 
They will develop kindness. They will develop goodness. They will develop self-control because they can see these fruits at home. They see a family where we don't shout. They will never shout to anybody because they've not been brought up in such an atmosphere. And if, for example, we are affected by any challenges, as it happens to anyone, then as a family, we will rely on faithfulness, gentleness, and forgiveness to navigate through the conflict and to navigate through the hardships as we face as a family. Hallelujah. So this intentional cultivation of the spirit, of the fruits of the spirit within our family, it will result into the harvest of unity, understanding, and a shared purpose of life. Hallelujah. So we must be intentional. We are not going to read these fruits of the Spirit and you think they are going to fall off from somewhere and come. We must be intentional on doing this. From today on, you'll say, no more shouting in the home. If we are angry with each other, let's speak to each other with respect. Let us address matters with respect. Because the young children in that family we learn and say, oh, so when I'm angry with my friend at school, when I'm angry with my colleague at work, I do not need to shout to be able to solve the problem. Hallelujah. So in the home, this is where we nurture the fruits of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Number three, forgiveness. It's a principle in the kingdom of God. In our Father's prayer, forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. Conditional. If you want the Father in heaven to forgive you, there is no way around it. You have to forgive. And forgiveness does not categorize uh, problems, does not categorize what people have done to you. You forgive because you have to forgive. Because if God has to play a video of your life, you would actually understand why you need to forgive everyone. Hallelujah. We are not good ourselves. We are not good at all. That is why we have to have the heart of forgiveness and grace. What does the Bible say? In Colossians 3.13, it says, Bear with each other. Forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Hallelujah. God forgave us. We were destined for destruction. But because of love, his unconditional love, he gave up his only son, to come and die for us sinners so that we might have his forgiveness. Hallelujah. In Matthew, once again, it says, Matthew 6, 14 to 15, if you give others the wrongs they have done to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, then your Father will not forgive you the wrongs you have done. So forgiveness here is a virtue. It's not a virtue only, but it is a commandment that is essential for maintaining healthy relationships and experiencing the fullness of God's forgiveness. We will always make mistakes, but as children of God, plugged in the source of love, do you have that forgiveness? If you find you have a heart that does not forgive, if you find that you have a heart which says, I will never forgive this, but I will never forgive them, then get to know you're not yet plugged into the love of God. Because God is love, and love forgives everything. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you just three questions, and I want everybody to reflect on your own life as an individual. How will you actively bring God's love in your family as an individual to ensure that it becomes a firm foundation of your relationships? 
because every one of us in a family, wherever we are, we all have to play a role. What are you ready to do to bring God's love in your family? Number two, how will you make your family prayer more intentional? To resemble a collective effort in caring and nurturing your family garden. Three, what will you do to contribute to cultivating the fruits of the Spirit? Love, kindness, patience, forgiveness. What are you ready to do as an individual? If you have heard this message and you feel something stirred in your heart and you feel you need to deepen your connection with God for stronger family bonds, now is your time. Now is your time. Whether you want to anchor your family in God's love, or you want to intentionally cultivate the fruits of the Spirit, take it to God in prayer. Jesus said, Come to me all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If your relationships are not working out as you expect them to do, take it to the Lord in prayer. And God is willing to mend the broken relationships and bring again unity because he's able. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good morning and we thank you for your words of wisdom that we've shared as your children. As we think of taking a journey deep back into connecting with you, help us, Lord. Become, let your love become a firm foundation on which we build our homes. Lord, I pray for individuals here or families here where relationships are not working out well, where children do not feel loved, where wives and husbands do not feel loved as they should be loved. God, I pray that you mend these relationships. We thank you for your grace and mercies which are new every morning. And as we decide on what choice to make, Lord, may your Holy Spirit be our guide in this. Give us the strength to cultivate the, spirit, the, the fruits of the Spirit. Give us the strength and the wisdom to be prayerful people because prayer is the key to heaven. Bless each one and everyone here today. And as we go, Lord, continue keeping us safe, keep our families safe, Above all, build our relationships. Let your Holy Spirit be amongst us, live with us, and stay with us as we try to connect deeply rooted into your love to build families that are God-centered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.